Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first reaction for today. We're making, like, four different reactions. Three SNG4 videos, and then Petey's gonna react to the Dolly movie trailer. Hey! Go away, Petey. It's not your time to shine right now. Oh, man! So we're gonna be reacting to SNG4 theory as Margaret did, so... Let's just get into it, because I don't really have much time. I got to do a couple of things, and I got to do that Ginger spinoff video, Stream Masterbot... Um, Pete needs to make his reaction. I gotta watch Murder Jones. Yeah, you gotta have lots of stuff to do today, so let's just gun on to this. <laughs> Man, Molly sure dies a lot in the SMG for show, eh? I mean, it's to the point where there are full compilations of hundreds of deaths in the show. Yet, after That's every death, Molly theory. always comes back okay, alive and memeing. Or is he? Let me ask you a question, folks. Have you ever considered that Mario might actually be dead? Well, he's not. He's right there. Totally alive, all good, no questions about it. Case closed. But wait a second. What if there was more going on here than at first glance? Ladies and gentlemen, let's dive a little deeper. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Ask the You Four Theory. A silly little idea where we discuss my silly little meme show. So let's get silly and talk about death. <sighs> So what's the deal with this guy, huh? He sure does die a lot, both in this show and in Nintendo games. He dies in many, many different ways. Getting poked by Goombas, getting stabbed, getting sucked into black holes, uh, like this. You get the idea. Yet, even after so many deaths, he always comes back. So what's the deal? Is he immune to dying? Is he some kind of weird psychopath who likes to die? Well, in the main games, he always screams like a maniac when dying. So I doubt he considers oh, death no. an afternoon stroll. Not but what bad. about an SMG4? Well, in Mario breaks the McDonald's ice cream machine, he holds his breath because he can't have ice cream. Dumb idiot. But this does prove that he can feel death yeah, and experience like death. So it's not like he's doing it because he enjoys it. For the most part. But let's get serious for oh. a moment. This does raise some questions about Mario. How does he keep coming back? What's up with this one-up counter he always has? Is that his life force or is it souls that he consumes from other people? Something weird's going on. And for that matter, where does Mario go when he falls off the side of the world in Mario games? An alternate dimension? An abyss filled with hundreds of Mario corpses? And also, also, why does Mario have nipples in Super Mario Odyssey, huh? A lot of strange occurrences happening, folks. And have you considered... I go on like this for a while. Let's speed this up. In the SMG4 lore, which you should totally watch by the way, Mario is the avatar of our universe. No, not that avatar. Essentially, he's the anchor of this universe. Here's a little comparison for all you nerds out there. Ever seen a little movie called Deadpool and Wolverine? Well, they totally copied us! In that movie, if the anchor being dies, the universe dies. Which we did first, by the way, so stop copying us, Marvel! <clears throat> Sorry, I got off track for a second there. Uh, if Mario's been kicking the bucket all this time, how come I'm still here? How come this world's still here? Is it a retcon? Is every episode a dream? Am I a dream? Am I even real? <laughs> okay, existential crisis aside. <clears throat> this logic also raises another question. Did this world exist before Mario was born? Or has Mario been here since the beginning of time? Well, in the game Yoshi's Island, we see baby Mario. Baby Mario has also appeared in SMG4 before. So we can rule out the possibility of Mario being some immortal god. Sorry, Mario. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, if Mario isn't immortal, then how come the SMG4 episode Super Caveman Rose exists? Well, if you haven't seen that episode, which you should totally watch, by the way, Toad and I get sent way back before Mario was even born, which leads me to this. Ah, <laughs> uh, not this, not this, cut, cut, cut. This is a prehistoric version of Mario, and the world's still intact. This means Mario is a part of a long heritage of fat red Italian plumbers that go wahoo! He's just like the Avatar. You might think this is a bit far-fetched. Well, need more evidence? Well, if you go to this exact coordinate on Google Maps, you can find Mario. Looks normal, right? Well, if you go back in time. Yeah, it's rewind time. There! In 2009, it was a different Mario. So there are different Marios and different Avatars. But wait, there's a problem here. In the SMG4 show, every time Mario dies, he comes back as the exact copy-pasted dumbass Mario. No differences in appearance or personality. How is this possible? Are they clones? Is Mario coming back to life? Are we pulling an MCU and doing multiverse shit? Well, let's explore some options. There has to be that. some way Mario keeps worming his way back into the show. I know what you're thinking. One-ups? The double cherry power? Modern medicine? <laughs> Wrong! 
You really think Nintendo, one of the most successful companies in the world, isn't doing some shady deals? Something dark is hidden underneath it all. But what? Did Mario strike a deal with the devil? Maybe there's a hidden demon somewhere in the Mario world. Okay, on the surface level, it doesn't seem like there's any demons in a series like Mario. Really, the only real mention of any form of god comes from the Mario RPG games, and even though we have some gods and demons in SMG4 land, eh, none of them would ever grant someone like Mario immortality. But we're on the right track. All these points connect to the actual answer. Religion! That's right, we're playing a bit of Super Mario religion here, folks, and today's lesson, Luigi! We all know Luigi. Sure, he's Mario's bro, but why does he spend his time sucking ghosts all day, huh? How is he able to defeat ghosts and ghouls while Mario falls victim? Okay, maybe too shocked, but this does lead to a shocking conclusion. Luigi is evil and working with the ghosts. Don't believe me? Mm. I have proof. Ever heard of these? These boards use demonic possession to talk to oh the dead. God, it may no. seem unrelated, but I've asked a data God. analyst expert to give us the proper pronunciation of this word. Luigi. Luigi boards, ladies and gentlemen. These boards were named after Satan himself, Luigi. View for yourself this incriminating footage of Luigi getting possessed before the Nintendo ninjas take it down. Now at this point, you might be asking yourself, how does this relate to Mario? Think about it. Luigi's the shy, timid brother, while Mario's the outgoing, adventurous brother. They're two sides of a coin, yin and yang. So if Luigi is a demon, then Mario has to be Jesus. <laughs> Okay, maybe he's not Jesus, but there is evidence to suggest a connection between Mario and Jesus in SMG4. If you watch Stupid Mario Arcade and pause at this exact frame, you'll notice something or someone very suspicious in the background. Enhance! You may notice a man dressed in white. That is Jesus! And this isn't the only time we see them together. In Mario Does Pranks, we see Mario talking to Jesus in the afterlife. Jesus rose from the dead, so maybe he taught Mario how to resurrect. Mario and Jesus do seem to get along pretty well. And for that matter, in the meme games, we see Mario T-posing. And who also T-poses, huh? That's right, Jesus. And that's not all. In the very first Mario Reacts to Nintendo memes, Mario rises into the frame, just like Jesus rose from the dead. I'm thinking I'm back. Coincidence? Absolutely not. Mario is 100% connected to the Bible, and not just in the SMG4 universe, but in the games too. According to Revelations 1.16, and he, Jesus, had in his right hand seven stars. Oh, I'm sorry, which game has seven stars? That's right, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. And that's not the only reference to the Bible. In Super Mario 64, we see Mario flying around what looks to be heaven. Mario also teams up with an angel in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. But the most damning piece of evidence, folks, is this painting right here, The Last Supper. What you might not know is this painting is not completely finished, but now with modern technology, we can finally see Da Vinci's fully finished painting in hands. Again! They thought they could get away with it. Not while I'm on the case. With all of these indisputable facts, we can confirm without a doubt that Mario has the same resurrection powers as Jesus. But is it possible that there's more to this story? Let's take a look at some hard facts. We know Jesus was born on a farm. I think, I don't know, I haven't read the book yet. But you know who else loves farms? Nintendo. This connection is too important to ignore. We call the September 13th Nintendo Direct from 2022. Gee, they show a lot of farming simulators around here. Coincidence? Of course not. It was all planned. All those memes and jokes about Nintendo loving farms, it was all orchestrated by Jesus and the big N. Don't believe me? Well, I snuck into the hideout and managed to leak this. Uh, <laughs> wrong leak. Aha, there. This signed document. This proves Nintendo and Jesus struck a deal, and this deal has been going on for decades. Take a look at all these collabs Nintendo and Jesus have done over the years. Bible Adventures on the NES, Super Noah's Ark 3D on the SNES, the Bubble Game on Game Boy Advance, Jesus appearing in Mario and Sonic, the Splatoon Church Game, the official epic rap battle between Mario and Jesus, the list goes on. These two have been collabing for years, and I already know what you're about to say. Why would Nintendo go to such lengths to work with Jesus? Ladies and gentlemen, get your tin foil hats, this partnership is only the beginning. It's time to dive deeper. Clearly, Nintendo's hiding something here, something they don't want us to know about. And it all comes back to Mario. Nintendo wants us to think Mario's super awesome. Well, I'm not buying it. He's been arrested before in Super Mario Sunshine. But did you know this isn't the only time he's been arrested? He's also been arrested for trying to break into someone's house. But wait, there's more. He kills Yoshi, committed assault, tax fraud, participates in illegal gambling, stolen livers, pirated games, been on a hit and run, committed literal war crimes. Starting to second guess how cool this guy is? Well, this is only the tip of the iceberg. These crimes extend outside of the games in SMG4. Check out this footage of Mario interacting with an innocent bystander. I love you, Sonic! And how do you think Mario handled the situation? He beat the guy up! Simply awful. 
what happens after that. He gets arrested and it's shared on the news. The detainees include those dressed up as Minnie Mouse and even Super Mario. And you might be asking why you've never seen such highly classified info. The same reason why Mario gets away with all of his crimes. Nintendo's legal team. A bunch of dumb gorilla lawyers. In no. fact, that dummy created a wall to keep everything all kid-friendly so they wouldn't get in trouble. Those damn gorilla lawyers. And believe it or not, that's not even Nintendo's most lethal force. But they only called in for things like... Piracy. That's right, the infamous Nintendo Ninjas. They're not a myth, and they're no joke. Look at this very real security camera footage of Nintendo Ninjas jumping upon a Nintendo fan. And let's not forget that Nintendo Ninjas destroyed my computer. Those a** destroyed my property. All I did was pirate a couple of games. All these years, we've been spoon-fed lies by Nintendo being this happy cubby that is for kids, when in reality, they're the shadiest of them all, and they'll do anything to cover up their crimes. Or Mario's gonna do something very illegal. Ah! Alright, I know I've shown you a lot of earth-shattering evidence today, but let's review the facts. Nintendo has this omnipotent red Italian, Luigi is Satan, they made a business partnership with Jesus. They have a million soul goodmans and an army of ninjas and Mario keeps committing crimes time and time again with no repercussions. What does it all mean? What is this leading up to? I'll tell you. But you're not gonna like it. What I'm telling you is top secret. And I'm not just being overly dramatic, but I've uncovered the biggest scam in human history. Nintendo is actually a cult. And you are all falling into that trap. Look at this follower shattering the gospel of Mario, and that's not all, it's spreading into media, video games, movies, TV shows, toys, even cereal. All of these are intentionally designed around making you feel nostalgic, so you'll love Mario too! Look at how excited Nintendo followers are getting over a skeleton, the symbol of death! It's the sign of the end times, and you might be asking, how can Nintendo get away with all of this? Two words, Papa John's. In an interview, Papa John said the following. Stay tuned. The day of reckoning will come. But what does this mean? What does this have to do with Nintendo and Jesus? I'll tell you. Papa John's is a promoter of Nintendo products. They're in on it. And even before then, there was this. They were giving away Nintendo Wii's to customers. They were spreading the gospel of Nintendo this entire time. Which means... Enhance. Enhance. Just as I thought, this was a three-way partnership! Oh, and think about it, in the SMG4 episode, Mario runs out of toilet paper. Papa John reveals his true form, Satan! Oh, what's that? We already confirmed earlier that Luigi's Satan? Well, open your eyes, that can only mean one thing! Don't you see? Papa John was really Papa Luigi this entire time! It's all connected! Papa John sold his soul to Nintendo, and they merged! Now they're helping promote Nintendo! Their end goal? To rule the world! Don't you see? The day of reckoning has come! Mario's already taken to the streets, causing chaos and starting rallies left and right! He's converting innocent bystanders over to his side! Not even pets are safe! Look at this footage of followers gathering for their beloved idol they love so much! Oh my god, America's already fallen, and it's not stopping there! No, Nintendo has their sights set on something much bigger! They're taking over the biggest event in the world! The Olympics! Listen to that crowd, how those followers cheer for the almighty Mario to return to them. Now with all these indisputable facts, one final question remains. Is Mario dead? No really, is he dead? I'm asking you, I kinda lost track where I was going with all of this. Is he dead? Am I dead? Let me check my pulse. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right, I'm dead. Mm. Oh my god, it's Jesus! I heard you were talking shit about me. Oh man. I thought I was really onto something with that. But hey, that's just a theory. And that's an info theory! Okay. Look.